You can play one black at home, two on the road, and three if you're losing. In the middle of the struggle for civil and political rights for African Americans in the United States, Texas Western College upset perennial powerhouse, the University of Kentucky, in the 1966 basketball championship game. Neither the 14,523 people in attendance at Maryland's Coalfield House, nor the millions of people tuned in on TV and radios across the country knew the significance of this game at the time, a game that would become one of the most important sporting events in the social justice movement. Texas Western's coach, Don Haskins, started five black players and then went on to play only seven of his players, all of them being African American, against Adolf Rupp's all-white Kentucky team. Within two years after Texas Western's monumental victory, every top college in the South had an African American player on their roster. Don Haskins' stand in history resulted in a wave that led to integration in college sports, making it possible for all players to play regardless of their race in today's society. In the 1960s, segregation was a huge problem in the United States. It resulted in deep cultural divides. During this time, civil rights groups rose up to advocate for African American rights, they led countless protests, demonstrations, and marches. These events resulted in President John F. Kennedy starting to draft the civil rights legislation in 1963, which was later passed in 1964. This bill made it illegal to discriminate against people based on their race, color, gender, and religion. While this bill caused desegregation in public schools and other public settings, many sports leagues at all levels were still segregated. However, Major League Baseball had started to integrate in 1947, when Jackie Robinson became the first African American player to play in the league. By 1965, 20% of the players in the MLB were black, and 38% were on the All-Star team. College football was also one of the earliest sports to integrate their teams. One of the most influential players was Sandy Stevens, who played at the University of Minnesota from 1959 to 1963. He was not only Minnesota's first black quarterback, but he was also the only one to ever lead Minnesota to the Rose Bowl. He led them in 1961 and 1962. Stevens also became the first African-American major college All-American quarterback. However, despite the integration of professional sports and college football, college basketball was still mostly segregated, especially in the South. According to Joe Gomez, from the Texas Western class of 1967 and a longtime fan. At the time, at the time, the Southwest Conference, which primarily a lot of Texas schools, uh, did not have one black player at all, football, basketball, or anywhere else. This was until Texas Western broke color barriers by fielding a team of mostly African American players in the Southwest Conference. 1960s, college athletics in the North had just started integrating their athletic programs, while conferences in the South and East had virtually no black players on their rosters. The Midwestern Conference, also known as the Big Ten, had been integrated since the 1890s. They had black players on their rosters, but bowing to social pressures, they would often sit or even leave their black players at home when they went to the South to play. The first collegiate African-American player was George Jewett who played on the University of Michigan's football team in 1890. Many other African-American athletes followed in his footsteps, but for years to come, they played limited roles. In 1955, Texas Western integrated their school, and by the next year, they had signed their first African-American athletes, Cecil and Charlie Brown. Texas Western College, now called the University of Texas El Paso, or UTEP, is located in the small town of El Paso. Despite being the town famous for its 1966 championship team that helped break down the color barrier in sports, according to Russ Bradbird, an author, professor, and former coach at UTEP. Paso became the first major city in the South, to end, and this was three years before the National Civil Rights Act. So El Paso was sort of the, the, uh, the leader in many ways in, in, in ending segregation. Former Texas Western coach Don Haskins wrote in his book, Glory Road. Back then, all the teams from the Atlantic Coast Conference to the Southeastern Conference to the Southwest Conference had only white players. 
While many coaches in the 50s and 60s were running all-white programs, a large percentage of Don Haskins recruits were black. Many coaches did not recruit blacks because of a belief that they were not intelligent enough and would not be able to stand the pressures of playing at such a high level. One reason coach Don Haskins was undeterred by race was growing up he had a close friend named Herman Carr, who was black, and because of his race, he didn't get any offers from colleges, while Haskins did because he was white. One of the reasons the 1966 team was also so successful was because the team worked very well together despite the racial stereotypes and boundaries thrown their way. Texas Western's strong team dynamic showed as they went into the NCAA tournament with a 23-1 record. On March 19th, Texas Western played the University of Kentucky in the championship game. Texas Western had a 12-man roster with seven blacks, four whites, and one Latino player. Don Haskins took a stand by starting and only playing his seven African Americans against the all-white Kentucky team. Don Haskins wrote, At the time, most teams in the South didn't have a single black player, but it wasn't uncommon for a school in the North or West to start three or occasionally four black players. But never, at least according to anyone's knowledge, did a team anywhere in the country start five black players. Haskins later said that he played his best players in order to win, but playing those players sent a clear underlying message. There is no difference between races. White or black, they are still just a player. The Miners winning the national championship helped open up the conversation of African Americans in college athletics. Sports writer Gary Nunn said, Texas Western versus Kentucky game was the watershed game in college history, the opening of eyes and the opening of doors. Texas Western's victory opened many eyes to what was going on in the world of college athletics in the South and changed the discriminatory views of many people and coaches, Haskins wrote. It broke the color barrier because the pressure on the Southern schools that discriminated against black athletes was too great for them to continue to field segregated teams. In the next few years, coaches started to recruit players based on their talent, not skin color, and colleges started admitting more black students. One of the most significant signs of change was when Kentucky coach Adolph Rupp, notoriously known for his recruitment of strictly white players, recruited Kentucky's first black player, Tom Payne, in 1969. Eddie Mullins, the publicity director at Texas Western said, If there was a color barrier, that game broke it down. This game not only meant a lot to the small town of El Paso, but it was life-changing for millions of black athletes. Haskins said, The positive impact of the game came through increased opportunity for black players. A couple of months after we won, Vanderbilt of the SEC recruited the first black basketball player and the floodgates opened. According to Steve Haskins, Don Haskins' son, Those conference may have been, you know, it was just all white. The whole conference was all white. And two years later, it was a, the, the all-conference team was all black. Texas Western's 1966 championship team has impacted sports today as they are one of the main reasons it is possible for most of the players in the National Football League and National Basketball Association to be non-white. According to racial equality activist Richard Lapchik, In 2015, the NBA was composed of 74.4% black players and 23.3% white players. And according to Vice News, African American males are only 6% of the United States population, but comprise nearly 70% of the players in the NFL. This game opened doors for African American athletes to play college sports and to get an education they likely would have not otherwise received. An important fact to note is that every member of the 1966 team received their degree. Despite the progress that has been made, there is still discrimination in sports today. Because of this, the National Football League instituted the Rooney Rule in 2002. The Rooney Rule requires that teams in the NFL interview minority candidates for head coaching and senior football operation jobs. This rule came into effect after two African-American coaches were fired, one who had a winning record and the other who had just had his first losing season in 10 years. Although not everyone has heard of Texas Western or know about the part they played in integrating college sports, their legacy lives on in millions of players across the United States. Current senior and star point guard at UTEP, Dominic Artis, says, Just the, the overall impact on, on life and how we interact with, with uh, people that may not be the same colors, so to speak. Uh, 